Okay, welcome to our webinar, uh, Why Marketing is Like Cooking, Learn How to Delight Customers with a New Recipe. Uh, my name is Jamie Irvin. I'm the host of the Heavy Duty Parts Report, and I work as a consultant in the trucking industry uh, with sales and marketing. And my my co-host today on this webinar is Diana Cudmore. She's the Chief Marketing Officer at our company, and we're here to share a new recipe with you. Hopefully we'll be able to share some tips and tricks for you in the next 30 minutes where you're going to be able to take that information right now and make a significant impact on the content marketing that you are producing. We're, we're very glad that you're with us. And Diana, welcome to the webinar. Thank you very much. I'm excited to talk about marketing and cooking. All right, that sounds that sounds good. Now, if if uh, anyone is curious, we are recording this, and we're going to make that recording available after, so that you can rewatch it. Uh, there also is going to be some homework assignments, Diana, for our guests, uh, so th they will need to probably rewatch it to be able to uh, get those homework assignments. But we're also going to make those homework assignments available uh, as PDFs when we send out the on demand replay. So are you ready to talk about why marketing is like cooking, Diana? I am. All right. Well, let's get into it. Um, first of all, there is a lot of heat in the kitchen, as it were, for people who are in charge of marketing departments. Um, marketing directors that we talk to say that they are frustrated with how difficult it is to cut through all the noise and reach their prospects and customers. I know when you've talked to some of our clients, that's what they've been expressing, hasn't it been? That's absolutely true. You know, with the economy, how it is, uh, when things start to recede, marketing budgets are often the first ones that are pulled back. So uh, yeah, marketing directors and CMOs, they need to know how to be most effective with their budget and their time. That's right. And digital tools for marketing in some ways have never been better, but in others, it's... Um... The, the algorithms and the technology are changing so fast. It's really hard to keep up. And then when you work in the trucking industry, like we do, there's also another aspect to it where, you know, sometimes it's, it's hard to get some people to see the full power of digital marketing and digital tools. And so sometimes getting people on board and, you know, you just get them convinced about one thing and then the algorithm and the technology has changed and you got to go back to the drawing board. So that's a bit of a challenge. Um, what else do you find, um, is is happening. You already kind of alluded to it. That's right. Yeah. Marketing departments are stretched super thin these days and they don't often have the resources that they need to be successful. So whether that's resources, tools, budget, time, um, yeah, marketing departments are having a rough time. So uh, knowing how to uh, use the tools that you have and the resources that you have in the most effective way is super essential these days. That's right. That's one of the reasons our webinar takes only 30 minutes, not 60, because we value your time. We're going to try to cram as much value as possible into this webinar. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about um, this new recipe, as it were. This is a this is a bit of a word picture, a bit of an illustration. But what we're really going to try to help you do is just give you some really great knowledge today that's going to help you to be more effective in your marketing job right now. So at the end of today's webinar, you're going to have a few tips and tricks and tools and suggestions from us. You're going to have some assignments to do that's going to make your, your job easier and make you more effective. So let's get into it. Let's talk about the first ingredient, uh, attention grabbing introductions. Diana, take it away. Sure. So um, most of us are actually exposed to between 4,000 and 10,000 marketing messages every single day. I know that seems like a lot, but when you take into account that you're spending 11 hours interacting with digital media on your phone, on the internet, on your computer, and lunch hour, um, we're actually scrolling through 300 feet of content every single day. Isn't that crazy? Right. And using using your phone 1500 times a week, like that, that blew my mind when I saw that statistic. I mean, this is what the average person we're trying to market to is experiencing every week. That's exactly true. And I don't know about you, but my scrolling thumb is pretty strong because we're scrolling through 300 feet of content. And so much of that is sponsored posts, organic campaigns, 
um, and messages from companies who are just trying to reach their target audience. And I think one of the reasons we're scrolling so much is a lot of it is buy from me type posts. And we just pass right by that because we're just not responding to that. So let's talk about uh, what we need to know about attention grabbing introductions. And you know, one thing is always good. It's always good to look at one of the leaders in uh, digital marketing and digital tools. So let's um, talk a little bit about so in this, in this, we're going to talk about that. But before that, I forgot about this slide. <laughs> so here's the point that we're trying to get at before we get into the tip. If you want people to come to your dinner party, as it were, you've got to grab their attention, right? You've, you, you know, if you want someone to come to a barbecue, you, you do something different than if you want someone to come to a black tie event, right? So it's all about me figuring out who you want to come to your and respond to your marketing. That's the first thing. And then you, you know, when you think about how we got your attention, we're all in the trucking industry. We only targeted people who work in the trucking industry, but we used a headline why marketing is like cooking. So that got your attention and you're here today on today's webinar. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit more about why we did that based on, uh, like I said, looking at the leader. So looking at the leader of, of Facebook, I mean, they have dominated the social media space for many, many years. They've innovated a lot of the different ways that we do things in digital marketing, and they've got a pretty robust advertising uh, platform as well. So what has Facebook done and what can we learn from that, Diana? Yeah, so Facebook kind of revolutionized the way that we interact with content online. So the way that Facebook measures a video view isn't if they watch the whole thing, it's if they watch the first three seconds. And if a lot of people are watching the first three seconds of your video, um, the Facebook algorithm pushes that to a greater audience that creates engagement. So that means, uh, conversely, if your video is not holding people's attention for three seconds, it will downgrade your reach. And if you think about that for uh, yourself, if you see a video pop up in your Facebook feed and it doesn't get your attention, guess what? Scroll. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So, so this just emphasizes this three second rule really emphasizes why you've got to hook people's attention. You got to, you got to use better hooks and that really doesn't matter whether we're talking videos or anything else. So, um, this is really important. And in principle, like I said, when you think about the first few seconds of a video and grabbing someone's attention, like if it doesn't speak to that ideal prospect and, and grab them, they're just going to scroll right past it. And, um, again, this, this teaches us something about not just video, but any content we put out, we should be thinking, we've got to think about that three second rule. How are we going to get their attention? And um, that leads us to our first homework assignment, because I think that we can really benefit from looking at what grabs our attention. So what, I, what we'd really like you to do is we'd like you to go to several social media channels and scroll. And every time something grabs your attention, just screenshot it and save that screenshot. And then I want you to go to a bunch of news outlets and just scan the homepage and see headlines. The ones that grab your attention again, screenshot those. Once they've done that, Diana, what do we want them to do? So we're going to look at those screenshots. We're going to compare them to our own company's marketing in a uh, informal audience uh, audit. Sorry. And um, we're going to try to recognize the patterns and the factors that uh, made those things on our social media feed and in those news outlets grab our attention. And we're going to compare that to our own marketing messages that we're putting out. And we're going to um, take some notes on what we could change to make our own company's marketing be more attention grabbing. Right. And how important is testing your updates with customers? That is so important. Um, a lot of the time we decide to change our strategy without actually having any data to back that up. Um, and so what we're going to have you do is uh, you can take some old content, um, change it, update it, make it more attention grabbing, make sure that there's a good hook in there, and then you can repost it or resend it um, to some customers and make sure that you're comparing the results with the first time that you sent it out without the updated marketing message. 
and comparing it to this time with your three second hook with your attention grabbing content. And, you know, marketing is an iterative process. We have to keep making adjustments until we get the desired results. And even when we get those uh, desired results, we need to continue to update and to push and to make sure that we are focusing on those hooks. Yeah. And this sounds like a really time consuming project, but it's really not. You should spend maybe about five minutes scrolling through your your favorite social uh, channels and news outlets, taking screenshots. You should look at maybe the last bit of content you put out in the last 30 days uh, that maybe would take 10 to 15 minutes to review. And then you want to take some of the older content that you've done a few months ago, and then you want to update it. So that might take a, an hour or two. So the total project could be under three hours and you could be publishing some some updated content with with some better hooks and then you can measure those results and once you see what starts to work for your ideal customers just do more of that and do less of what wasn't working okay so let's get to the second in, uh, ingredient um, let's talk about this a little bit diana yeah so when a baby is first learning to speak i know i have an eight-year-old so i barely remember those days um the process of connecting visual and audible cues to physical things is the first step in learning how to speak so in simon lancaster's book connect he uses the example of the fluffy thing in the corner is a cat and a cat is a fluffy thing so the baby's brain makes that connection and then builds on it as they get older and, and what's interesting is as we get older, we get to adulthood, the connections in our mind happen at a subconscious level. They're, they're like rapid fire. So let's like take a look at what we did. When we named this webinar, Why Marketing is Like Cooking, we connected two things that you who's listening to this webinar right now are very familiar with. So marketing is something you rely on. It's your job. So you rely on it to make money. That taps into that survival instinct, but so does food because you spend your money um, on food and you need both to survive, right? You need money to pay the bills. And some of those bills come in uh, the ever increasing cost of food. So whether you realized it or not, you made that connection. And um, with that subconscious connection that you made in your mind, you looked at this and you said, okay, this is potentially important. Maybe I need to, to uh, learn this. So I'm going to at least check it out. And that subconscious decision prompted you to engage with the content. And then some of you uh, actually registered for the webinar and said, yeah, I think, I think I'd like to check this out. And here you are. So you can do the same. Let's talk a little bit uh, about exactly how they can do the same with their content. Diana, walk us through the 20, excuse me, walk us through the 20 idea method. Yeah, absolutely. So with the 20 idea method, you're going to need a notepad and you're going to try to make 20 connections between each of your core products or services. And you're going to try and connect that with something that people will immediately connect with. So for example, turbo, uh, sorry, turbochargers are like fuel injectors are like mobile repair is like, and you're going to list out 20 of these things. Now I know 20 is a lot. So the first few are going to come easy. The last few are really going to uh, push you outside of the box. And it's in these last few connections that the gold really happens. Right, Jamie? It, it does. And believe it or not, um, when I actually came up with the connection between marketing and cooking, I was actually at the gym. We've been thinking about it. We've been making our lists. Uh, I, I couldn't think of any more. I went to the gym. I was working out. All of a sudden, boom lightning in a bottle. I got the idea and I said, Hey, I want to try this. So here we are. Now, what's really important is to test the connections, right? I came back to my team and said, Hey, what do you guys think about this? And everybody agreed. We really like this connection between marketing and food. Let's try it. Um, so you can do the same with your team, right? You can take all these lists. You can go to your team and say, Hey, which ones do you think would be, would be interesting for us to make content about and make those connections for our customers? Um, and, and you get the, like, let's say just the top three or five for each core product. And then you go back to all the hooks that you screenshot and the, the different kinds of hooks you've been coming up with. And you, you now bring these two strategies together. So the hook is the, 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 the first three seconds. And then in the content, we make this connection for the person in their mind. Now, this is kind of like some Jedi mind trick stuff here, because the, a lot of what we're doing here is very subconscious for the ideal customer, right? They're just going about their day. They're scrolling on their phone. They see the hook. 
They stop for just a second to look at the hook. After that three second threshold is reached, they start to engage with the content. Once they look into the content, you make this connection in their minds. This thing that we do is just like that. And it's the basis for the entire piece of content. And then you want to have that call to action at the end to be able to get them to do something to engage further with what you're doing. So a lot of times when we're putting together social media posts and we're putting together blog articles and stuff, it's easy to kind of forget these things, isn't it? Yeah, that's absolutely true. But, you know, this uh, hook connection call to action, I mean, it's sort of like a magic recipe. It, it it really is. And what we're finding is when we do this, when we push ourselves uh, on our end to do this, what are the, the difference in results for like, let, let's just look at when we shifted to this approach, Diana, over the last 90 days, let's say, um, what were the results for our, or our organic reach? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, between the posts where we don't use this method, or where we weren't using this method in the past and uh, posts where we've been really successful at uh, employing this method. I mean, it's like a 20 X difference uh, with those posts that really resonate with people. Yeah, we had posts before that were more of that just like buy from us kind of messaging. They're getting two, 300 impressions, one, two likes. Now all of a sudden we're seeing impressions into the thousands. We're seeing 20, 30 comments. It's, it's, it's remarkable how just taking this and, and using this recipe really, really helps. Now, when we are cooking in the kitchen, there are a lot of tools in the kitchen. And this is something that's really interesting for me. I, I think about this because I don't cook and Diana, you do. So I'm sure you probably make better food than I do, right? I feel pretty confident about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've never tested that out because you're you're in Indiana and I'm in Northern Canada, but one day we might do so at a barbecue or something. But anyway, that's right. Um, the, the the interesting thing about that to me though is is that we you and I probably have very similar tools in our kitchen. Um, we have access to probably the same ingredients and certainly the same recipes with just a quick Google search. And yet you make better food than I do. So similarly, the dig- the digital tools that are available they're all they're all the same. They're all out there for every company to take advantage of. And most companies just aren't leveraging them to their full potential. That's kind of the trend that we see when we're consulting with a lot of the heavy duty manufacturers, parts distributors, and other trucking companies. Um, You know, they have access to it, but they're just not leveraging it. And so we already talked about Facebook and the three second rule. Um, You know, just understanding that one thing, that one little tip about the three second rule and, and understanding how it impacts the algorithm this can change your your whole approach to marketing and content. And um, really then it, by extension, it changes your whole strategy with every video that you post, not just on Facebook, but any video that you make. And then when you go a little bit further, it actually, you know, you start to realize, oh, the hook is so important. Yeah, I need to do more work on that. Now it changes our whole strategy with um, all of the content that we make, no matter what it is. So video, articles, audio, whatever. I, I That's the power of really mastering and understanding just one little piece of that tool and and how it can have this trickle down effect and impact the entire way that you go about doing your job. So what we wanted to do with this third ingredient as part of our recipe is to talk about some of these other little things with other platforms. And we're going to extract the lessons that you can apply across all of your content. So let's get started. First, we're going to talk about Google. I want to talk about this one because it's a personal favorite. Um, I think it was May 2021 when Google changed, had a major algorithm update, and they had a fundamental change in the way that they approached serving up uh, content for people who are searching on Google. So they stopped ranking entire websites and started ranking everything by individual pages. So that's a big shift because you think about it, before someone would search something and your website, maybe your homepage got served up as you know, the person who can answer this question, but then they really shifted to, no, we're just going to find the landing page inside of a website that has the best content on it. 
So this reminds us that you have to build specific content that people are actively searching for. This is on your website. This is a, you know, the blog articles that you do. This is about the the landing pages you make, but this is also about the social content. You have to start thinking about things in terms of what would my ideal customer search and then how do I make the best content to answer that specific search query? And if we do that, Google, other search platforms and social platforms will serve up our content with their algorithms more so than if we don't give that specific kind of attention. And additionally, this means that we have to plan for the user experience in a different way. See, I remember before we would always plan on websites like homepage, then top menu and navigation. And we would think about it in terms of they're coming in on the homepage and then where do they go from there? But now it's much more likely with this algorithm change that people are going to show up on a specific landing page that addresses a search query. And we have to start thinking about from that landing page, how do they navigate the website? So now we have to use best practices that we only kind of applied to our homepage before. We have to do that with every page we build. So it's a big kind of shift in our thinking about how we approach the content for our website. So so I hope that helps. Uh, Let's move on to the next one. Instagram. Tell us about a little tip about Instagram and how it, how it impacts our overall content marketing strategy. Yeah. So uh, Instagram has really developed since uh, it first began when it was uh, mostly about putting out pretty pictures, getting likes, right? Um, but now we're using Instagram um, to engage, right? That's the real key. Instagram will give us more organic reach when we engage with other people's content before and after posting something on our accounts. So Instagram is really encouraging us to not only put out messages to our community, but to engage with and be a part of our community with how we're interacting with them. So this reminds us that to get engagement, we must also engage with the people that we want to receive our marketing messages. Now, this is on Instagram, but we can take this uh, change in how Instagram is giving out organic reach and we can apply it to other social media platforms, right, Jamie? Yeah, you 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 rarely get more than you put into something, right? A back out of it. So, um what I what I took away from this is this is self-serving for Instagram, right? Because it keeps people on platform more. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in our next tool as well, but it's also it's also good for you. Because the more engaged we are with ideal customer profiles uh, on social channels, the more likely we have the opportunity to actually get into real conversations with them and lead them to a revenue event for our company. So this is a really important uh, mindset that we need to be in. One thing we see in in our consulting work that we do with a lot of companies in the trucking industry is, you know, it's almost like, okay, we've done our social posts. We can check the box. We've written out the blog article. We can check the box and we sent out the email campaign. We can check the box. But that's just the first part of the job. The next part of the job is then to go and engage and get people to engage with you and get that two-way conversation going. We see a lot of a lot of companies really struggle with this um, because they're kind of consumed with the traditional activities that they have to do. And they often feel, hey, I already have a full-time job. I don't really have time for that. But if you're really going to make digital successful, this engagement factor can be an X factor for you that can put you head and shoulders above your competition. Let's talk about LinkedIn. This is our favorite social platform. Um, it's a business oriented platform. It's fantastic for getting to decision makers, but here's an interesting, interesting thing about LinkedIn. It actually reduces organic reach. If you link away from the platform in the post that includes using a YouTube link. Now, when you use a YouTube link, the thumbnail comes up, it looks like a regular post. It looks awesome, but it, we've tested this. It will not perform as well as if you take that same video and upload it directly to the platform. So it's native content on the LinkedIn platform. And so what we have seen recently is um, LinkedIn was really pushing their polls and those were getting crazy reach. And then all of a sudden that started to taper off. And just in the last little while, video has really gotten a big boost. Um, now when we post videos we that are natively posted to the platform, we're getting probably five to 10 X more reach than we did just, just three months ago. So you've really got to think about 
how to work within the platform and help the platform achieve their goals. Like obviously LinkedIn is feeling some pressure from probably TikTok, from uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and, and all the video platforms that are out there. So they have made an adjustment. You know, they they launched their poll uh, product. So we were using polls and getting thousands of impressions. It was awesome. We're still doing well with that, but it has come down. Now video is going up. So you've got to work with the platform and kind of help them achieve their goals and they will help you achieve your goals. Sometimes we say our clients, they kind of just get into a systematic way of making content and they just go on repeat over and over and over and over again. And kind of regardless of what happens with results. And that's a mistake because you really have to adapt your strategy to what's going on with the platform. Um, so those, those three things, when you put them together in co- conjunction with the Facebook three second rule, now you have like insights into four different platforms, four different approaches. And, and all of these things brought together give us uh, a, a wider view of how we should approach digital content marketing in its totality. So, okay, let's review the third assignment from today's webinar. So we really want you to go back and edit, or sorry, audit your website and social media channels. I want you to take everything you've learned today, look at your hooks, look at the connections you're making and the structure of your content. Um, and, and make sure that it's following these best practices. That's going to help make, it's going to push you to make better content and you're going to get better results. But admittedly, when you, when you do the audit, you're probably going to come up with a pretty big list of things that need to change. And that can be a little bit overwhelming. Um, but what is the best way to approach this, right? It's just work at it one thing at a time. That's not just practical. It's also a really smart idea because if you change six things, you can't tell what worked and what didn't. So we really want you to change one thing and, and measure those results. See, okay, I made this one change on my website. What happened to results? Or I made this one change to the way we produce videos. How did that impact results? Again, when you find things that work, do more of that and things don't do less of that. Um, and you really have to be persistent to keep making the changes in a systematic way, one at a time to get the results that you're looking for. This is really, really important. We're going to make uh, these three assignments a PDF and we're going to email it to you. Don't worry about that. It'll come with the video replay. Sometimes when we mail those, email those out, it goes to the person's junk. So if you don't see it, uh, we'll, we'll get this produced and sent out to you tomorrow. So if you don't see it by tomorrow morning, uh, just check your spam junk folder. It might've ended up there. Um, and of course, we're also going to make the replay of this video available on our YouTube channel for the heavy duty parts report and Jamie Irvin, uh, both of those YouTube channels. So let's talk about the special offer. We promised that, um, maybe you could review that with our, our guest today, Diana. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got sort of this, uh, monthly special for you. Um, we are launching a heavy duty marketing program where we're taking everything that you've learned here and more. And we've put it into a 90 day program to transform your content marketing strategy. Um, this offer gets you unlimited access to our learning management system. Um, we're also including a weekly consulting call to help you with these assignments. We know that a little bit of accountability or somebody there to uh, ask questions to when you need them is super important to uh, making these 90 days really count. And also we have unlimited email help requests. That means whenever you have a question, whenever you're um, something isn't really clicking for you, you can email uh, consulting at heavydutypartsreport.com and um, one of us will get back to you What within 24 hours, Jamie. Yeah, that's right. So uh, unlimited email request, but uh, 24 hour response time. And that would be 24 hour business. So uh, we do take the weekends off and that's just the way it works, <laughs> but we're there, but we're there to support you um, every step of the way. And, you know, regularly when we work with our clients, we offer them a 90 day consulting package. It's not usually so hyper-focused on just one segment of their business. It's much more comprehensive, but usually we we charge six $6,000 for that. And we're giving you a special offer. If you are, um, if you, you email us by July 31st, 
consulting at heavydutypartsreport.com. You're going to go right through to Diana's inbox. She's going to set up a discovery call with you. We're going to walk you through the program and uh, we're giving a discounted price uh, because this is a beta test of a, of a new pro- program and we'd really like your help. So we're trying to give you a bit of incentive. Uh, it's $4,800. That's a $1,200 savings. And uh, we would really look forward to working with you. We, we're excited about showing you the learning management system and showing you how uh, we will help you transform your content marketing strategy. So that's what it's really about. What you're going to get out of this, you're going to get a comprehensive strategy that is customized to you. That's part of the weekly calls that we do with you. You're going to get access to this learning management system where you're going to be able to get review specific instructions, do assignments. It's going to really put you on the track to in 90 days, transform the way you make your content. And uh, it's going to transform the results. We've seen our clients who who have taken the best practices that we teach them in a consulting capacity, and we have seen them double their brand brand uh, exposure in a very short period of time. So we are really looking forward to hopefully working with you. Thank you so much for tuning into the webinar. We promised it would only be 30 minutes and we are at 30 minutes. So from Diana and from me, Jamie, thank you so much for attending. We will see you very soon.